SAS 4x4 and today I'm going to bring you a little bit of a different video. I'm going to be doing a rig rundown on my 200 horsepower patrol. So yeah, I've been getting a lot of questions about the turbo setup and all that. So I'm just going to answer all those today and clear everything up and uh, show you what's under the hood and all that. So yeah, let's get into it. Hope you enjoy. All right, so here's the power plant. Uh, it's a 4.5 litre petrol with a factory motor. I know a lot of people don't like these because they're very thirsty, which they are. Well, I'm getting about 35 litres 100. But if you put that aside, they're pretty good. They basically last forever. You can't kill them. And I've gone ahead and turboed it. So that's an XR6 turbo. It's, uh, I think, a GT35. But I've swapped out the rear housing. You've probably seen in one of my other videos to a smaller one. Uh, so to a 0.6. Uh, so the boost comes on really early rather than later on uh, The exhaust manifold I'm running is a radius fab uh, Manifold I think it's a place in Queensland or Melbourne. I can't remember now, but yeah, the place is called radius fabrications uh, That's just a TD 42 high mount manifold uh, So you can use any TD 42 manifold. They all fit the same or TB 42 They'll all bolt straight on so yeah, you can get a low mount as well But I just went high mount so I like the look of it Low mount's probably better because you won't have that much heat staying up in high in the engine bay, but it looks cool, so that's why I went with it. Um, it originally had an external wastegate. Again, on one of my other videos, I've changed that to an uh, a external one, not an internal one, sorry, uh, because it couldn't actually relieve that much boost with the rear housing. It wasn't big enough, so the boost wasn't escaping, so I put that. Uh, all these pipe work has been done by um, a Unique Mufflers uh, exhaust shop in uh, Sydney. So we've done all that and the exhaust, which is a three inch exhaust. It's got a high flow cat and a high flow muffler. Um, uh, the radiator I've upgraded previously because the other one exploded. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's just an eBay spec uh, three core radiator. Uh, the mass airflow sensor, I originally did have it used, but now I'm going to remove it. I don't need it anymore, it's just there for show at the moment. Uh, fuel regulator, forget which one it is. It's a turbo smart one, but I forgot the exact model here. I'll zoom in for you. Maybe it'll say it there. Yeah, so that's just there. So you can monitor fuel pressure. This is an uh, air to fuel. So this is an air temp sensor. So it measures the depends on what temperature it is, it changes the fuel ratio and all that and that goes straight into the Haltec which is I have a Haltec Elite 750 ECU um, other than that for the turbo I've got the feed lines obviously that and the drain just taps into the sump underneath I'll show you where that taps in so that that just taps into the sump there and yeah that goes underneath the turbo and on this model of engine you have all these um, uh, hoses coming from the rocker cover and all that. So I basically run those to a catch can, which is here. It's not bolted in yet, which I have to get around to it, but just uh, for the, what it was, what brand. Oh yeah, it's just a Ryko catch can. And that goes, so you've got it in and an out. I've got a T in there somewhere, you can see it, which those two join in. And then the other one, goes back the what's left from that goes back into the intake so basically it filters out all the oil and puts it back through the turbo and then uh, this I have to change because originally I had them running to here but then it was building pressure in the cr uh, transfer in the crankcase sorry so that's why I got rid of them and just cover them up so yeah I just cover them up but for now yeah they're like that I'm gonna change this piece eventually probably get rid of this as well at the same time I do that so yeah, I think that's about it for the turbo. Injectors are standard, but I will be changing them because uh, I just got it dynoed and that's what's limiting it. So they're standard. I've got a Wallbro 255 uh, fuel pump in it. And I think that's about it. I don't know what else I'm missing. Oh uh, yeah, the airbox. So the airbox is just a uh, Demon Pro one. And you, if you know anything about TB45s, this is full of stuff like this. I think it's a carbon canister. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but that was in the way. That was there. So I just made some brackets uh, out of aluminium and relocated that there so I could fit this here. And also the windshield washer uh, reservoir is usually over here where my catch can is uh, on all patrols. But because my intercooler piping is in the way, 
I got rid of it and just again made some brackets and put it over there. So yeah, it's fine. You can, if you want, after the car's been running, you can boil an egg in it if you like, because it's next to the turbo, so you get nice boiling water in there. But other than that, it's great. Um, and then the intercooler pipe in, what I've done, I've run them through the side here, and it goes underneath up there into a front mount. You probably can't see the front mount. That's because I've made it like part of the grill. I've hacked up the grill. But the front mount is just there. So there's your front mount in the cooler. Very hard to see. It's like stealth. You can't tell. It just looks like a normal grill, but it's in there. So like you see underneath, I've just made some, some brackets for it. It's in there. Now, this side, the intercooler piping, I'm not happy with it and I'm probably going to change it. But at the moment, it comes down and goes through there. As you can see, it's been rubbing because I haven't put rubber and it's rusting, but I'm going to change it. The thing is, I have to relocate the aircon uh, lines, which is in here. So that's the aircon. I don't know exactly what it does, but something for the aircon, but that's in the way. So I've got to move that and get custom lines made. So then I can fit the piping through here behind the headlight instead of through the wheel arch. At the moment it hasn't scrubbed on tires, but that was on 33s and I just put 35s now. So we'll see if that scrubs. If it doesn't scrub, I'll probably end up leaving it. But if it scrubs, we'll have to change it. So yeah, that's all that. I'll show you the ECU now. It's a bit hard to see, it's a bit of spaghetti in here, but there's your Haltech. I've got the plug and play harness. So yep, yeah, that, that's all in there, plug and play harness, so pretty easy to set up. Put a boost gauge in, as you've probably seen in another video as well. Um, yeah, and I think that's pretty much the entire turbo setup. So yeah, I just got a dyno yesterday and it made 202 horsepower at the wheels. That was on 33s. Now I put 35s, but to be honest, I can't notice the difference between 33s and 35s. It still has heaps of power. And it made 550 newton meters of torque as well. So can't complain with that. All right, so now we'll talk about some of the other things of the car. I won't go into too much detail. I'll do a, a separate video on that, but just briefly, it's got a dual battery, just a King's isolator. There are rear batteries in the back. Um, it's got a five inch superior lift. Everything superior, hyperflex arms, except for Tough Dog uh, steering dampener. Um, what else do I have? I've got, I just put new tires and rims. These are Lenzo wheels and I got Conforza, Conforza tires. So they're really chunky, sort of a cheapo, not really cheapo, but like a cheaper sort of tire. Uh, my theory behind it was I go cheaper tires and they'll wear quickly. I can afford to replace them more often instead of buying like treps, they're like 600 each and they'll still wear quickly and then I have to replace them anyway. So yeah, these are pretty aggressive. Yet to be tested off-road, but we'll see how they go. Yeah, I got some Southern Cross Fabworks rock sliders, uh, Raz the rebar, and there's your spare. Uh, I put the lights in it. Underneath everything, still there. I got coil retainers and dropout cones and some Superior Hyperflex, um, Superior Hyperflex sway bar. Just a King's warning, Rhino rack roof. Uh, racks. I've got like an over overkill of lights, two light bars, one there and one behind. The reason for that because I picked that one up really cheap so I thought eh, why not just put it on. Patrol Doctor Staino Snorkel. Uh, I like that one, it makes a lot of turbo noises through there. GME Aerials I've got, let me close this by the way. GME Aerials, so yeah, the short ones are 2.8 dB UHF. The long one is, I think, a variable gain. Uh, I think it's like from two point something to seven point something. I can't remember now, but that's a uh, 4G antenna. It, the bad thing is it only works with Telstra and I'm with Vodafone, but I put my mate's phones on it and it works well. But my phone at the moment, I can't use it. I've got to change my provider. All right, the winch. So since this is uh, this bull bar is the factory bull bar, it doesn't have a winch cradle. So I bought this winch cradle and I had to hack the shit out of the the thing with the grinder to make it fit but it works well and then i wrap the coat of the bar just because it always used to get scratched on the side so i just wrap the coat of that 
probably will be changing the whole bull by soon. I'm thinking of getting a Razzla, but we'll see how we go at the moment. Yeah, so that's about it. I'll quickly show you a little bit inside. and uh, Yeah, but like I said, there'll be a more detailed video of this, but this is just a brief overview. The seats, I'm going to be changing to XR6 seats. I'm just keeping an eye out when I find them. So, waiting for those. Um, just <laughs> Aldi rubber mats. i still got the originals at home, but they get dirty, so I don't use them. Uh, Uni then UHF, Sony, uh, it's a Apple CarPlay and Android Auto head unit. I've got my, my voltmeters here, that's the main battery and the second battery. Um, all driving lights and rear lights and all that's here. Um, yeah, so that's about it in here. I've got a dash cam, not too much going on in here. I'll show you the back. Alright, so just got a... All right, so there's there's my second battery. <laughs> I've got an Alpine uh, subs here, two 12-inch subs, and a Pioneer um, amp. So it goes pretty good, just a King's fridge. I do have another fridge, which is a 65-litre dual zone one, but it's too big for in here, so I don't really use it. I just leave it at home. This is perfect size, I still have heaps of room to put things. I would like to get drawers, but then I don't want to add extra weight. I like the power it has, and I don't want to change the rear springs again because I've changed them three times for different weights. So I don't want to keep changing them. But yeah, that's about it. So that's a quick overview. So yeah, that's about it. So if you guys have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below, and I'm happy to answer them for you. Uh, future plans for this, I've got, I've ordered, and I'm waiting for them to come front and rear locked. So that's when we'll see. I want to get longer shocks to increase the flex in the front. Um, Obviously, I think I mentioned seats. I'm going to be getting seats, front bar, and I think that's about it for now. With the power, I'm happy. I can get more power out of it, but I need to change my injectors. So I really can't be bothered doing it. It's got more than enough power, and I don't want it to use more fuel. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. So yeah, stay tuned for another video.